The Moro arc has been one of the craziest stories in Dragon Ball Super, maybe the craziest as far as all of the outlandish events and crazy moments we've gotten. So on this video, I'm going to deliver my top 10 biggest WTF moments of the Galactic Patrol Prisoner arc, otherwise known as the Moro arc of Dragon Ball Super, the manga. Let's get to it next. Elections can be confusing, but we all know who to vote for. Now available in the Geekdom 101 official store, the Satan 2024 brand. You can get t-shirts, hoodies, a uh, face mask, or a poster in tons of different colors and sizes, whatever you think looks the best for you and whatever size you would like as well. He's a former world champion. He saved the earth multiple times. And more importantly, he is a man who you can trust. Vote for Mr. Satan in 2024 and get your hands on the Satan 2024 merchandise right now. I'll leave a link down below. All right, so when it comes to this top 10 list, it's not about moments I liked or disliked. They're both going to be mentioned. It's about moments that had us all kind of surprised and, you know, shocked and in some ways just kind of pleasantly surprised or horrified. Please make sure to leave your top 10 favorite or even top five favorite WTF moments in the comments section down below. I would love to get your opinion on what moments stood out to you in the moral arc. So let's go all the way back. Okay. Number 10 on the top 10 WTF moments of the moral arc, the return of the Grand Supreme Kai. We have not seen this character whatsoever in Dragon Ball since flashbacks during Dragon Ball Z. But now, because of the history between the Grand Supreme Kai, the Dai Kaioshin, and Moro, not only did he come back in flashbacks, but he also came back to kind of inhabit or take control of Majin Buu's body. And we got a really fun, magical-based fight between the Grand Supreme Kai and Moro, not to mention at the end of the Moro arc when he surprisingly showed up to tell Oob to put his hand up in the air and donate God Key to help Vegeta with his four spirit fission Genki Dama. So it was cool to see that character back in a way that actually made sense. It did not feel forced and it connected with the story of Moro. Number nine, Piccolo being an idiot saying Vegeta never underestimates his opponent. I made a whole meme about this. I made a meme video about this on the channel. I don't know if Beerus' chopsticks caused brain damage in Piccolo or what happened, but the idea of Piccolo saying that Vegeta never underestimates an opponent when that's literally all he has done from the very beginning of the introduction of the character is just mind-blowing. Toyotaro really flubbed up with this one, and it shocked the hell out of me. Granted, if Piccolo would have said something like, he used to underestimate his opponents, but he's gotten better about that now, it would have been more understandable and, you know, it would have made more sense. But to say he never does that... What manga are you reading, Piccolo? What story are you following here? Maybe it's one of them fan mangas that Blackscape covers, because it ain't this one, I'm going to tell you that much. Number eight, remember when Moro turned off the transformations? Look, we've seen transformations be an integral part of Dragon Ball from all the way back with the grade eight form that Goku used in the original Dragon Ball. So when Moro does it, it's not really turning off the forms. He's just draining their energy. But when we first saw it, it looked like he was just turning off their forms. And that was just a big shocker. No matter which method he used, he rendered the transformations useless for at least a short time. Moro became the first one, and it instantly made him way more interesting than many of the other characters that were introduced in Dragon Ball Super, in my opinion. He posed a new kind of threat for Goku and Vegeta, one they would have to defeat by using a different method, not just transforming that they would do with other characters and other opponents. Number seven, when Miris was revealed to be an angel. Yes, a lot of us were able to predict this. Some thought that Moro was his god of destruction. Some thought that Miris was an evil character and that was also wrong. But there were teases to this. Remember back in chapter 42 when Miris knocked out Goku and Vegeta? Like, that in itself was shocking because we had no idea this kind of Galactic Patrol weakling could do that until we found out that not only was he an angel, or at least an angel trainee, but he also had intense and extensive knowledge of Ultra Instinct and would help Goku be able to hone his skills and eventually learn how to master perfected Ultra Instinct and use it at will. 
Mirrors turned out to be a very, very important part of this arc. In many ways, the best part of this arc because he helped Goku evolve as a fighter and in a way kind of evolve as a person, although that is up for debate. Either way, he turned out to be a pretty cool character. Number six, Moro getting Mirrors' power. This one was a huge shocker. Even though a lot of us predicted that Moro's hand had gotten cut off and he would use it to take somebody else's power and we all kind of saw that in several different videos I had done the past few months and other YouTubers had done as well when we found out that Moro was able to copy Mirus's power and at least tap into a little bit of angel power it wasn't everything but his body could not maintain it that whole event was crazy just seeing his body get all mutated and discombobulated and all you know grimy was pretty cool but I don't think anybody actually predicted, except for maybe a small handful of you who are great prognosticators, I don't think many of you were able to predict the fact that Moro would actually be able to use some of Mirus's power. Not all of it, because he's a mortal and Mirus is an angel and they're totally different types of beings. But either way, that was a big shocking moment when it happened. And we are now halfway through the top 10 WTF moments of the Moro arc. Number 5. Here we go. One of my favorite moments, one that I totally loved, and that was Moro crippling the Z Fighters. When Moro first transformed and got 7-3's power, the fact that he went in there in a very violent and bloody way and just dismantled the Z Fighters, you know, Gohan took punishment, Piccolo, he just went in there and just wrecked them, including ramming his arm through Goku's chest leaving a huge scar on Goku's chest like that was freaking incredible yo the blood the violence something that we had not seen from the Dragon Ball Super anime because of Japanese television restrictions in the time slot we may never see that on TV ever again unfortunately but it reminded me of some of the more violent moments of classic Dragon Ball and Z back when things were just totally bloody and totally gory before things change in Japan. And sometimes, like I said in that review, you have to use blood and violence to illustrate how dangerous the opponent is and to illustrate the pinch, the danger that the heroes are in. And I think that that chapter and that moment really illustrated that. And Toyo Taro did a great job with that. Speaking of Moro and 7-3, number four on the list is when Moro ate 7 3 Granted, we had an idea that 7-3 would be involved in the finale one way or another. And I do feel like after this happened, Moro's character kind of did regress a bit. But when we first saw that image of Moro eating 7-3, he opened up his mouth and literally swallowed this thing. I mean, he likes to suck. He likes to swallow. Think whatever you want about Moro right now. The bottom line is just that image of Moro doing that, even before the transformation was just a crazy visual like I cannot wait until the anime version of Super adapts this whenever that is and we get to actually see this in anime form because we've seen like Cell and Majin Buu absorb people and stuff like that but it hasn't quite been like this he didn't have to turn him into candy like Majin Buu where he just literally opened his mouth and swallowed the dude whole and yeah that was a crazy visual in the Moro arc number three the most annoying moment of the Moro arc I've talked about this in several videos. There's not really a need to repeat what I'm saying in detail here, but it's when Goku gave Moro the Senzu Bean. By now, Goku should know better. By now, Goku should know that not all villains can be redeemed. For every Piccolo and Vegeta and Tenshin Han out there, there's also demons like, for example, Kid Buu, who got reincarnated, not so much redeemed, and characters like Frieza, who... You know, not really a redemption. He was helpful, but he's still kind of a prick. And other characters like that who are just going to be evil. And Moro's just an evil guy. But Goku not only had mercy on him, which is one sort of a mistake, so to speak. But he also gave him a Senzu for no reason. He could have just arrested him and sent him away. But he gave him the Senzu. And to me, that was a boneheaded move by Goku. And that's not just my opinion. A big part of the community agreed with me on that. And it was a regressed, bad writing for Goku, in my opinion. But luckily, at least in Chapter 6-6, six, six, Goku was able to, you know, at least acknowledge that he made a mistake. So, there you go. Number two. Almost done here. When Goku created the giant hologram of himself 
at the end of chapter 66. This was a crazy visual. Goku goes in there with Ultra Instinct after being regenerated by the Genki, by the spirit fission energy of Vegeta, everybody else, and of course the surprising assist of Oob, not even knowing what he was doing, to give Goku the power to create a hologram key image of himself to hold down Moro while his true self came out of his forehead and punched Moro in the crystal forehead and finishing him off once and for all. This is a brand new ability for Goku, one that I thought was pretty damn cool visually. Does it make Goku a bit too powerful? Yeah, I could see that, but honestly speaking, it looked great, it was unexpected, it was a unique finish, and one that I actually really liked, and I liked the fact that you know, it was something new for Goku, a new ability that he had learned. So it was still very much a WTF moment because I remember when that image first leaked. I mean, everybody was just going nuts. Like, what the hell's going on? What is this? Nobody understood what the heck was going on. And they made comparisons to other anime and other manga. But either way, it is the second to me most WTF moment in this entire arc. What is number one? My number one WTF moment that had me going, huh, was Moro fusing with the Earth. We've never seen this before. It's something that really took a lot of balls for Toro Taro to do to create this grand climax where Goku was able to battle against Moro. Moro had no choice but to absorb himself because his body was totally out of whack. He had to absorb himself or fuse himself with the entire planet. So it was Goku facing off against the Earth controlled by Moro, who was also sucking up energy through the gravity in the Earth itself. So, this was just crazy. It was a crazy visual. There was comparisons to Gengar and the Cave of Wonders from Aladdin. And just seeing this and seeing Goku go up against a villain that was planet size, literally. It's like Unicron or some shit, right? Like, this was just a great visual and a great final test for Goku in this arc. Granted, there were a lot of problems with the writing in this arc, and, you know, ultimately there were there are things to nitpick unquestionably. I still feel like this was a great sort of final chapter to Moro and a true new challenge for Goku because, remember, he could not just destroy the Earth because the galaxy was in danger, and we don't want that. Also, millions of lives, billions, in fact, of lives were in danger. Maybe more than that, even, if you count the entire galaxy. So, with that being said... That, to me, is my number one most WTF moments of the moral arc. Those are my top 10. What are yours? Leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing what happens next in the Dragon Ball Super manga. And I look forward to eventually someday seeing these moments play out in anime form. Because if they get the right animators in there, it could be quite a treat for us to watch. Thank you. Have a great day. And if you enjoy this video, check out these videos as well. I love you.